loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. We've got behind us a place where you can donate blood to save lives. I will not call that into a doubt. A doubt. That if you were to give these people blood, blood will save someone else's life. But you got to realize, according to Acts 20:28, 20, there was a sinless, perfected, holy blood given by God that you might be saved. You see, this blood can heal accidents, cancers, surgery, and yet the blood of God can heal you of your sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory. There are none righteous. There is none that doeth good. There is none that seeketh after God. You stand in a fit that you are a sinner. And as a sinner, you can never stand in the presence of God. A religion, a works-based salvation, will not pay the debt of sin. For God sent His Son into the world to take on our flesh and became sin for us who knew no sin. That the wrath of God upon sin can be poured out upon His Son and not upon us. See, you lie today in condemnation because you are hearing the gospel that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And He was buried. And He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And what I'm going to tell you is that, the gospel, That is the only way to God, for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. That's Jesus speaking. You can't come to Jesus with you thinking you're good. You can't come to God with religion. You can't enter the gates into heaven by what you've done. Because what you've done, what religion has done, what you are can never be matched with the sinless perfection, righteousness of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And if you cannot say, that my salvation, my entrance into heaven is 100% upon the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You will not find yourself in heaven. Heaven is wrought by the finished merit, the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. Without Jesus Christ, without His gospel, without His blood atonement upon Calvary's mountain, you will die and wake up in a place called hell. And you will burn in hell as being a good person. You will burn in hell being in religion. You will burn in hell based upon your baptism wishing... You would just have that water for the tip of your tongue. And yet, going to hell is not needful for you. God is not willing that any should perish. He is long-suffering. He has given us to you, the Lord Jesus Christ, as 
the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. God has met everything you need to do to go to heaven. He has done it all. He has completed it 100%. A sacrifice that is approved of God, met by Jesus Christ. You've got to believe on Him to be saved. You've got to trust in your Savior, sent by God and not in self. You've got to forsake what man has you to believe. Man trying to tell you what he has never knew about God. Where God has told us in his Bible, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that was written in this Bible, yes by man, but by God, that Jesus Christ is approved of God, and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all your sins. Now you may give blood, I'm, I'm not against it. Give blood, great, help someone. But the blood that you give cannot give eternal life. You can give them extended life. But you can't give them eternal life. Only the blood of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, without spot, without sin. And when you die and you face God, it ain't going to be check. It ain't going to be what you've done. It ain't going to be where you are, what you've been. It's going to be based upon the Lord Jesus Christ and His death, burial, and resurrection. The mercy and grace of God is by Jesus Christ. It's not by Mary. It's not by an angel. We are upon a gospel of God by Jesus Christ that is to be put out by the feet of men going all the world and preaching the gospel. God is not going to send you an angel. God is not going to send you a sign. God is not going to send you a wonder. He's going to send a man with a Bible, with a mouth, to show you what the Bible says about salvation. That's what God's going to do today. And we will speak the language that you speak. And no heavenly language. So if you're, if you're looking for this great experience in your life, it is for you to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That is the only greatest experience you're going to get. You're not going to feel anything before you put your faith in God. You don't get the Spirit until you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You get no revelation from God when you, when you reject His Son. You'll have no love, no peace, no joy, no patience until you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes after your belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, not before. Well, I want God to show me. God wants you to believe and repent. God wants you to believe that Jesus died for your sin. He took on your sin nature, being without sin himself. He wants you to put your faith and trust in Him, and not man. He wants your finished salvation to be wrought in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't want people in New Jerusalem saying, look what I did. He wants those who will say, look what his son had done. Those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, those that are approved 
presence of God when we get to heaven, we'll be praising the Son and not ourselves. All praise, worthy, and honor belongs to the Son. And yet, some of you here stand and will say, I'm good enough to get to heaven. Well, I'm not going to sing praises to you. You got to break down that pride and sing praises to the one that has died for you. For God so loved the world. That's the love message. The love is that God sent His Son. The love is God sent His Word. The love is that God has sent men with the Word, with the Lord Jesus Christ, who are saved, to show you what to do. The heavenly directions to God is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You have got to come to Calvary's hill. You've got to come repenting, sorry, acknowledging how wicked we are. Jeremiah says our heart is just filthy. It is wicked. It is vile. And if you knew the heart of the person you're doing business with right now, you would take your money, put it back in your pocket, and walk away. And yet God knows both of your filthy hearts. And what's the difference between someone like you and someone like me? My wicked heart, the sins have been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have been cleansed. I am a child of God by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I am free from sin. If you're not free from sin, your death is not sure where you go afterwards. Because if you're not free from sin, you do not have the Spirit, you are not saved, and you will burn in a place called hell. Hell for you is where you pay for your own sin, rather than Jesus. Hell is where you say, I can do it my way. Hell is God, I'm much better than your son. Hell is cash, check, or money order, or charity. New Jerusalem is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. New Jerusalem, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. We're all living. And the Bible says that there is an afterlife. But the Bible says there's no life in hell. And yet you'll spend all eternity there. And you don't have to. Just come to God's Son. Come as you are as a sinner. Repent of your sins. Plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And be saved. That's it. And that will change your destination from hell to heaven. By the belief of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you come to the fact that, hey, I don't want to go to hell. And yet, I have sinned against God. I am 
it not worthy ever to be in God's presence by what I have done and thought? And could it be possible that the Son of God can reconcile me and God together? Phew. Phew. Oh. And since I am so absent from God being a sinner, that the only intimator between me and God is the man Christ Jesus. Now the person that you think it's between you and God, if it's not Jesus, you have no hope. Mary can't save you. The taking or shedding of people's blood can't save you. You've got to have a man for salvation. You've got to have the sinless man for salvation. You've got to have the Son of God as your salvation. You've got to have the man that is of Judah as your salvation. I'm sorry, but if you belong to the KKK, you can't be saved because Jesus is Jewish. You can't be a Roman Catholic and say, Oh, Mary, Mary's not the Son of God. You can't say, I'm a Islam, because God will not come to you in an angel, as the Mormons. And you can't be a Jehovah Witness and say, God is not Jesus, and be saved, because Jesus has to be God. Jesus has to be of the Jewish nation. He has to be of Judah. He has to be a man. He has to be the salvation. He has to be sinless. He has to be everything that God has wrought for you to be saved, and you can't meet that. Now, you may name your child Jesus, but that's not going to save you, and that's not going to save your child, because I know personally in jail, there's a lot of Jesuses. A lot of them end up in jail. So calling yourself Jesus is not going to work. And yet Acts 4.12 says, There's no other name given amongst men under heaven whereby ye must be saved. There's one name. There's one blood. There's one salvation. And then you got to be careful because Paul tells us there are other Jesuses. You may not have God's Jesus that you're relying on today. God's Jesus is not political. God's Jesus is not to be taken orally. God's Jesus is to be taken by faith and by belief and by trust. God's Jesus is holy and righteous. And I don't even know the meaning of those two words. And yet God says, I'm righteous by Jesus Christ. See, I can walk up to God today, right now, and God, I'm a sinner, but I'm righteous by your Son. The only righteousness that will save you is the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ in His shed blood. If you don't have no blood, you don't have no salvation. If you don't have the Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son, the Father, the Virgin Birth, who is God, you're not saved. If you have never come to Christ Jesus and ask Him to save you and repent of your sins, and honestly and seriously dealt with your sins and your sin condition, you're not saved. 
You've got to have a point in your time where you come to God through His Son and say, it's all by you. And they still don't even know what I'm doing. But I know that I'm a sinner, and I am repentant, and I'm sorry, and I want Jesus to wash me. And it's not just a prayer. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from the Word. The Word is thrown out of salvation today. I'll stand here and I'll quote from you book, chapter, and verse. God reaching out in Isaiah 1 to you. Come now, let us reason together. Though, our, though your sins shall be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. God is reaching out for you to be clean. God's reaching out to you today to come to His Son. God is wanting you today to believe on His Son, to be saved, to have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. God does not want to cast you into hell. He has sent men like me with the Bible that you may hear what He demands of you and yet gives you a free will. So you can't be forced. I can't force you into salvation. It's got to be of your own free will. The Bible goes so far to say, even the Holy Spirit has got to draw you to God. Not your preacher, not your mother. You've got to have the Holy Spirit come and work for you for true salvation. And you've got to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, that's past tense. The love of God was shed abroad upon Calvary's cross when Christ took on all sin. The Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Where's God's love? It's on the cross. Where do I become a Christian? When you walk away from the empty tomb believing on Christ as your Savior, as your way, as the truth of God, as the eternal life. When you walk away from that empty tomb and it's all rested upon Jesus. It has all been given to Jesus. You walk away from that empty tomb as a believer. When you can speak nothing of Christ from that point. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All I'm doing to you today is I'm just testifying that I'm saved by God, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the death, burial, and resurrection of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just testifying, hey, it's real, it's true, and it can happen for you too. My heart has believed and my mouth won't shut up. And in death, I'll forever praise, praise Jesus for what He has done for me. What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There's nothing else. There's no one else. And yet, as an atheist, God calls you a fool in Psalms. See, the hardest thing you got to realize, when you hear a preacher like me with a King James Bible, as much as you do not like it, and I don't care, because the Bible says, go out and preach the Word, 
As much as you don't like it, you are without excuse anymore. You have heard the demands of God. You have heard the payment of God. That Jesus saves and Jesus saves alone. And when you walk away, whatever you were relying on, rejecting what we've been preaching to you, you will stand guilty before God. And you can never tell God, I never knew. I have abolished your excuses. In the love of God, of course. By preaching that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that there is no other. It is your free will to believe. It is your free will just to believe. But the Bible says God is right. And when you hear the gospel that Christ died for your sins and you continue on your own ways, you are going against God and there will be wrath. And if Jesus Christ doesn't pay for your sins, you will pay for your sins in hell. And you will pay for your sins forever. And yet today, Christ has paid for your sins. Your sins can be washed in the blood paid by the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, by just asking and coming to Christ as a sinner. and relying on what the finished work of Christ has done for you. Step on out. There are people here who can, who can speak to you with an open Bible. I'll turn this off. I'll speak to you. If you want to be serious, I will not argue with you. I will not debate with you. But if you're truly seeking God, you come over here. I've got a Bible. I will turn this off. I will deal with you one-on-one. -on -one. See, right now I'm loud so all can hear. I want the message that Jesus says to be heard by all. Excluding none is all possibility. I would love to have the great honor in a big city somewhere to get a hold of one of them nuclear scientists to be able to speak on there for 45 minutes. And I won't give you sports, weather, or any kind of nonsense. I'll give you the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. Rest assured that death is coming. The wages of sin is death. Your eternal hope, your eternal damnation rides on what you do before you die. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, or to reject the Lord Jesus Christ and be lost. Some of you think, ah, he ain't got no love. He doesn't care. I do care. Listen, I wasn't here last week because Monday I had an amputation. I'm on IV treatment right here. I just got out of the hospital. I've come straight here to tell you about Jesus. And that He can save you. I don't want your money. I'll take your prayers. But I want you to know that Jesus saves and that you can be saved by the precious blood and Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That's 
do what I want. And if you're here every week, I want to hear it every week, every week, every week. And if there's new people here, I want them to hear about the saving grace of Jesus Christ that they may never heard before. I want your ears to wrinkle in that Jesus saves. I want you to know that Christmas is coming. And yet you have no present for Jesus, and Jesus has a present for you, eternal life. Death is coming. You're going to be glad that you ever received Christ, worshiping, hollering, hallelujah. Or you're going to be most miserable and damned if you reject. And you'll be worse off in hell knowing that somebody tried to stop you. It'll be worse to know that someone actually really showed true love by preaching the gospel. And that true love is the one that loved you, that died for you upon Calvary's cross. No greater love is than a man laid down his life, and that's what God done for you. God took all your pain, punishment, chastisement, whipping, wrath upon Jesus Christ that you might not go to hell. It's already been paid. Why pay it yourself? I mean, if you had a credit card that you paid off full, would you keep paying? Your balance is zero, and you, you keep paying. That'd be nonsense. And yet your sin debt could be zero by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, if you go off into hell, you're going to pay something that Christ already paid for. That you need not. And the Bible calls that a fool. You're going to pay for something that God's already paid, and you're going to pay for it in torment, and tormenting, and tormented. When Christ has already suffered, and died, and was buried, and arose again, that you might have that life. And when you rest your sins in God, when your sins are washed in the blood, they're forgotten, they're erased, they're gone. Is there anything God can't do? Yeah, He can't remember your sins under the blood. Is there anything God can't do? Yeah, He cannot ever lie. Is there anything God cannot do? He cannot resist a sinner that's going to come to his son for repentance. Is there anything God cannot do? He cannot let you into his heaven unless it's by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, his son. We come to tell you that Jesus saves. You are a sinner. You must be born again. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be saved. And only Jesus will do it.